Hi everybody and welcome to, well the first, the first instalment of Chatter About the Chatter at Men's Radio Station. I do have to say uh, quite a few thank yous uh, first of all. Uh, that theme music, as I just came in, and I don't know if everybody heard that theme music like I heard that theme music, uh, was pretty cool. Thank you so much for that, Cena. Very, very much well uh, appreciated. So my name is Cody Cudworth. Uh, this is Chatter About the Chatter. Yes, I'm a life coach, uh, and I am so happy and genuinely uh, grateful to be able to do this uh, radio show uh, for all of our uh, listeners uh, and everybody going to be enjoying this. Uh, men's radio station. Uh, and before we get any further in introducing who I am, I have to say some massive, massive thank yous. First of all, to Russ Kane, uh, if he's tuning in. Uh, I did a guest spot with him about two months ago, uh, maybe not even two months ago, and we had a short little chat, and we got back in contact, uh, and... There we are. I've got my own radio, digital radio show. So how cool is that? So thank you very much to Ruskin. And we are going to be talking about that little guest spot that we did. Uh, we're going to be talking about thoughts. Uh, and we're going to be talking about how these thoughts uh, can 100% absolutely mess us up and screw us up on a daily basis. And it, it's, a, it's a great subject to be talking about. Uh, but again, before we move forward, I've also got to say thank you to somebody else as well, which is Hilary O'Neill from O'Neill Management. Thank you so much. Uh, I know how much you've been talking me up, uh, and, and, and it's an absolute massive thank you from me. Hand on my heart for that one as well. Uh, so thank you very much to Hilary O'Neill. So who is Cuddy Cudworth, uh, and what is chatter about the chatter? So... I'm always very honest about my story uh, through 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 life and things like that. And I think my, my biggest uh, torment with the thoughts was about 10 years ago. Uh, something happened in my life that absolutely just sent me on a massive spiral. And at that point, I genuinely thought it was one of the worst things that had ever happened to me. Uh, and this is where this, this internal self-talk absolutely just run rampant and that's how i eventually and I'll, I'll tell you why learned about this chatter in the chatter these conversations that we have with ourselves and if those conversations are not really happy or positive and especially with the the year that we've had uh it's it's i mean it's been about it's been a tough year we have to be honest about the year that we've had for some it's been more tough uh, for others and for some it's not been as tough and we, we understand that there's different mindsets and different things that we have. And I didn't have a strong mindset many, many, many years ago. Me personally, could he could with standing at six foot two and, and three feet wide, big burly guy, uh, didn't really have the strongest mindset. And um, we, we go on this journey. And my worst part, because I think especially men, we have to talk about this, is when we have this perception of what we should be, which has come from our beliefs growing up, we're the men, uh, we are the big burly guys, we're the, supposed to be the strong ones. But yet on the inside, and let's talk about on the inside, we've got this internal conversation which is going, you're worthless. You're, you're, you're absolutely nothing. You can't do this. <laughs> and we're stood there. Not telling anybody about these internal conversations. Hi, Veronica, how you doing? Not telling anybody about any of these conversations that we've got going inside. And this is the chatter about the chatter. How are you, Veronica? Thank you so much. Um, and that's what this, this the, the started out as a podcast is now going to be a digital radio show. Is we want to get the message out, not only about self-talk, but the way that we think is causing how we feel. So if you want to feel different, we do have to change the way that we think or those styles of thinking that we have. Uh, and the first in interaction that I had with, with Russ, which was absolutely amazing, uh, was we're talking about these automatic, automatic negative thoughts. And we're going to touch on that coming up very shortly. But let's explain what Monkey Mind is, uh, because the name of the company that, that I am and that I represent uh, when I'm help working with clients and helping them to start learning to understand their thoughts, understanding their emotions. It's not about being able to control those thoughts and call the, to control those emotions. It's about learning how to not let those thoughts, that internal chatter, control you and not letting your emotions control you. And unfortunately, not just now, but a lot of the times, we don't realize that we're not in control. We're not in the driving seat, if you like. We have these emotions that are just... We feel them, but we don't understand them. And then we have these thoughts that are scary. And a lot of people's thoughts can be so scary. And I, I'm definitely coming from a place that there's sometimes 
And I think we do need to talk about these things, especially in gentlemen. Uh, and as we have these thoughts, they pop up and we can be like, oh, did I just think that? Did I just think something so devious, so so nasty? Did it pop up? And then it's like, wow. And then we get scared. It creates this, this fear within ourselves that gentlemen think, well, we can't talk about these things. And in a world where everyone says, oh, you've just got to be positive. Oh, you've just got to be positive. And I was talking with a friend today about, you know, what is positivity? Because, you know, we can't be positive on a daily basis. It's not about constantly being positive. And when people say to us, oh, just be positive. Let's be honest. It's not really that simple. And I was talking uh, with a really good friend of mine. And I said, you know, the definition of a positive mindset. And I certainly come from a place of positivity is or a positive mindset is having a mindset that when we are not in a place where there's anything to suggest that there should be anything positive we have the tools to be able to climb back up dust ourselves on off and get back on and that's what the the the, the, the i mean i I'm a, i come from a place of, of neuro-linguistic programming uh, nlp and I found meditation to be one of the absolute best things uh, that, that ever I, I started part of my life. It certainly got me down from a, or up, from a very deep, dark hole that we can often find ourselves in. And I, I think we should talk about the, the, the past year that we've had, or the 18 months of, we've, we've had these programming and these words used to us, especially if you are, if you watch the news a lot and we just constantly get this, this, this barrage of you can't do this, you can't do this, you can't do this. And this has been programming, isn't it? It's been program our, programming our minds uh, and it can, it can genuinely have massive uh, effects on our mental health because we've constantly been told what we can and can't do. Uh, and if I didn't have the, the coding that I have, and we'll talk about the coding and the thoughts that we have and how we can code the brain. We're going to explain what the brain is for a lot of, of, of our listeners uh, and how we can retrain the brain to actually be more positive. And I certainly came from a place of my uh, my worst times, my genuine worst times nine, 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 10 years ago was I'd be that kind of person, total Mr. Positivity of no Today is going to be the best. It's going to be the best day whatsoever. It's going to be the best day ever because I'm in charge. This is what everyone tells us. You're in charge of your emotions. It's going to be the best day. It's going to be for the best day. So I had these expectations that the day was going to be the best day ever. All right. And then by 9.30 in the morning, something, something in the day, something or a person would say something and that would just be like a rat, rat, red tag to a bull. That's genuinely the, how I was going. I was angry. I was frustrated. All because of some something that happened to me in the past. And I couldn't cope with that mentally. And my mental health 100% took a, a, a thing. And that's that's it, what it got so bad. And I'm, I'm going to come from a place from, from gentlemen, obviously. I, and I'm going to be really honest. It's a men's radio station. But most of my clients are actually ladies. I've been working all the year with, with ladies and, and things like that. And when I got this chance to be able to speak on a radio station, a men's radio station, uh, and a lot of my fellow coaches, and they say, well, men just don't talk about these things. And I'm like, right, we need to get the message out to, to let men and give them a place to be able to talk. So again, I have to say a massive thank you to Russ for giving me this chance. So hopefully any gentlemen that are out there listening, this will resonate and you'll be like, ah, I've been there or I am there. If you are in that place where that chatter, for whatever reason, is so loud. Oh, thank you. 50% of our audience are women. Good. Absolutely fantastic. This is great. Even though it's a men's radio station, brilliant. So ladies, absolutely here to help as well. And I hope this, this, this might resonate with you as well. So if you are in that place where you cannot turn that internal chatter, so that's why it's the show's called Chatter About The Chatter. If you are in that place, I've been there. I've been there. And I used to sit on, on a pedestal of, no, my problems are far worse than anybody else's problems and no one understands my problems. And that created this mindset of, and we will talk about this, we will kind of touch on this a little bit, of a victim mindset. It's a, it's a terrible word, but it does create... This mindset of 
No, no one understands my problems. No, my problems are worse than everybody else's. And, and we can struggle. And it got to a place, it 100% got to a place where I thought I was hiding and I was walking around saying, I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I'm fine. I'm fine is like the, is, <laughs> for me, is like the international warning sign for I'm not fine. <laughs> It's like, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And that's the thing. We think, as as human beings, we're, we're hiding this, this inner turmoil that we have inside us. I thought I was hiding it. I thought I was covering it up. Even though I had those, those days where you just are like, I can't even focus, can't even breathe, because this conversation was absolutely drowning out. And it drowned out conversations with my family. My own family, I could not even have conversations. I couldn't have conversations because this, this internal chatter was so loud. It was deafening. So, and especially if we're talking to gentlemen and ladies, sometimes a, a lot of the, the ladies do say, and it's, it, it can go both ways for men or ladies. We often say that our partners are not listening to us. And that is often the case. But sometimes our thoughts are so loud it can stop us being able to listen, focus, and understand because we get locked up here. And once we get locked up here, that can 100% be, be, be so damaging for people and everyone around. So I thought I was covering it. I'll, I'll be very honest to everybody. I thought I was covering it. Yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, I'm fine. I started drinking a little bit more. I wasn't really a big drinker. I've never really been a big drinker. But I started drinking a little bit more. Yep. Yeah. I never turned out to be a really bad drink, but I just, I noticed I was drinking more because that was the only way I could sleep. That was the only way I could sleep. That's the only way I could turn uh, turn off the, those thoughts and those conversations. So that was a big, big warning sign. <sighs> Veronica, you're 100% right. It's frightening as male suicide is so high. We need more openness that mental health, needs. it does. It genuinely does. Because, and especially if you're a father in, in, in a family and, COVID's decimated the, the, the country and, and, and things like that. It's decimated the whole world. And people have lost jobs and, and it can take a massive toll on, on, on family and things like that. 100%. Especially, and look, we have belief systems. We're going to be talking about these belief systems over, over times that create what we think we should be or what we are. And it can decimate. It can decimate you personally. It can decimate your families around you. And I was really grumpy. I genuinely was so grumpy. Uh, not just grumpy. I mean, sure, it was just a snappy. Oh, I used to lash out, especially when I was talking to my wife. And it got so bad. And that was the thing. And I'll always say a massive thank you to my wife. It wasn't what I needed to hear at the point. I'm, I'm always very honest about that. It's not what you want to hear. Because we create that little pity party for ourselves. And I don't know if anybody else has done that or if anybody else is out there, but we create that pity party. And we hold on and we hug that little pity party. And unfortunately, at one point, you'll have had some sympathy for that little pity party that we create. And once we create that pity party, you think, oh, your little monkey mind or your brain just thinks, oh, you play a little sympathy, you get a little bit of love. So we start creating that sympathy even more. And I, I, I always remember that the, 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 the six months and my, and, and my, my span or terrible mental health was six months. Six months. Um, and I'm sure people, I mean, I've worked with, I, I mean, I've worked with clients who have 100% been struggling for three years, three years they've had this internal chatter and they've not felt comfortable to be able to talk to anybody about it. Three years. And the beauty of it is when we do get the chance to work together and we do, we do three or four sessions together and we're like, oh, it was so much easier than I thought it was going to be. That's the word. For any of our listeners, that's the word. Think, thought. Oh, I thought it was going to be harder than it was. I think it's going to be harder. Because we create this story for ourselves of our destruction and our pity is far worse than everybody else's. It's got to be hard to get out of that. It's got to be hard. And there's so many things, and there's so many things out there that can actually help, such as radio shows like this, such as podcasts that are out there. Um, there's so many things, and we just want to constantly get this message out for anybody that's listening, whether it's it's, it's ladies who are with partners, um, 
or family members and he'd be like oh well this guy's talking to you know he kind of he kind of always talking about what i had going on or what, what, what you're going on but i do always say thank you and a massive thank you to my wife my wife was right there and I, she did say the one thing that i didn't want to hear which was tough love tough love such a controversial word uh, word tough love and the tough love that came from from my wife was whatever you're going through is now starting to affect me. Now I'm always very honest that the first thing that popped up is, "What well, cow? I can't believe I'm all sitting down the whole world's against me." And she says it's starting to bother her. But it was honestly the best thing that she, she ever said. And that's that's when Monkey Mind came about because I had to start going out and I had to start learning. Oh, this is what's going on? And I did. I remember going to the doctors, and I do remember going to the doctors and saying to the doctor, "Oh, I've just got. I just can't stop these thoughts. I just can I'm just. I'm constantly tired. I'm frustrated. I'm angry. I'm snappy. I'm miserable. I wake up in the morning. I didn't know what I had. I genuinely didn't know what was going on because it was weird. And especially when we talk about depression, depression. Before I knew what depression was, was something really serious. It was something." Oh, you don't want depression. You, you, you're gonna there's, there's, there's suicide. It goes all these things. Ah, oh, Veronica. Ah, oh, brilliant. Thank you, Veronica. Great words. I know those are those have come up shortly. So I went to the doctors because that's the first place you go, right? That's the first place you go when anything you think that you're not well. Uh, you go to the doctors, and I just remember the, doc the doctor gave me the phone number for the Samaritans and said, this, and I'm like, well, I'm not really suicidal. I mean, I'm not really suicidal. Uh, I've had suicidal thoughts, but I'm not going to take action on those thoughts. But I still had all this chatter of failure, of absolute disgust with myself. I mean, disgust with myself, not worthy enough, not good enough to be able to do things just because something happened that was just, to me, torturous. Uh, and that's why you've got to talk about these things. If you don't talk about these things or get that platform to talk about things, that's that's where it comes from. So monkey mind, what the hell is monkey mind? Monkey mind is that conversation that is going on and your thoughts are a really clever way to, to, to say is we've got thoughts that are just swinging from branches to branches to branches in a tree and it's insecurity, it's fear, it's negativity, it's bad stuff. And if you don't know how to control those thoughts or understand the thoughts, I, I, I'm not a believer you can control the thoughts. I think we can have these thoughts, but we can let them come in and we can let them pass. If, if the thought that I'm having is not happy or conducive to, to me having a good day or anybody else having a good day, it's not a thought that I need in my life. But this is not that magic swill that, that pill that you have to swallow. It's about training yourself, retraining the brain, retraining the way that you think. Because when those negative thoughts come in, we have an opportunity. Do we interact with them or do we let them go? And that meditation did teach me that. Um, and if you ever want to go to the website, there's some free meditations on there for you. If you ever want to get in contact, you're always more than welcome to get in contact uh, to find the support. And I actually do free meditation every Monday as well, even if you've never meditated before. And a lot of people I have chatted with do say, oh, I can't meditate. I can't meditate. And I challenge that. I do challenge that. Because if you can breathe, you can meditate. What we find is we can't, we don't want to meditate because we're scared about sitting with those thoughts. Because it is, it's like it's like two gorillas fighting in a cage sometimes. So there is going to be that disturbance within yourself. It's going to make you feel uncomfortable and, and things like that. And, and that's what monkey mind is. Monkey mind is me as a life coach is when I work with people, we, we start looking at the way that we think and it creates the way that we feel. And... I was not aware of this many, many, many years ago of I'm actually in control of how the way I feel. That's my responsibility. And I, I, if you ever check it out on YouTube, go to YouTube. There's a YouTube channel of all the, the lectures that I used to do. And you might find some useful tips there. And I used to do this story about sausage stealers. And there's always going to be sausage stealers. There's always going to be people that's going to come and try and steal your joy. There's always going to be someone that's going to come and try make you angry. They probably don't even realize it, but they might try and make you, you, you feel angry. And it's our responsibility to be able to understand our emotions and our thoughts. And that's something that I had to learn a long, long time ago because I wasn't understanding that at one point. So that's a little bit about the show. Uh, and we want to give away, as we're talking this, and if anybody wants to leave some comments, Veronica's uh, leaving some comments. That's an absolute fantastic thing. That that, that gives us that little bit of, of feedback. We can And I can answer any questions for you live uh, on, on the show and things like that. 
So a big question for a lot of our people, a lot of our uh, listeners and a lot of the, the, the clients that I work with, why do I have negative thoughts? Why do I have negative thoughts? Why are they constant? And I always try and explain it uh, as simply as possible. The one thing a lot of my clients have said to me is you simplify all the really technical stuff that goes on within our lives. So call me the simplifier. If you want to call me the simplifier, that's absolutely fine. So I want to simplify what your brain is doing. And if your internal self-talk, that internal self-talk is not on point, it's like a virus for your computer. And we're going to get to that. I don't want to jump too, too far in. That's like the virus to the computer. And that's what your brain is. Your brain's a computer. Your brain is programmed to remember negativity. It has a negativity bias. Imagine that. Something so powerful and useful has a negativity bias. Now, I come from a place, if anybody ever chats to me, is I come from a place that everything has a positive intention. That's that's one of the prerequisites and the presuppositions and the rules to neuro-linguistic programming. And how we can really change the way that we think, we talk, uh, and it can make a massive, massive impact on your mental health. Huge, huge, and I mean that sincerely. So I have lost my train of thought a little bit there, but that's that's what NLP, so everything has a positive intention. So your brain has a negativity bias. Now I already hear you screaming and shouting. Well, that's not positive, is it? Well, no, actually it is. Your brain has a positive intention. The positive intention of your brain is to keep you alive. So your brain has to remember the negative things that have caused you pain. Remember that and put it into your subconscious. Put it into your hard drive. Put it into the memory. I'm just going to move that to the side. Remember, that caused you pain. I, the brain's job is I've got to keep you alive. Twinned with your subconscious mind as well. They're linked together to keep you alive. So there's a positive intention to your negative uh, negative bias brain. So it's wired to remember the negative in your life. So that's one part of this, this massive story that we can have that may help any of our listeners. The rest of it is a lot of imagination. And we'll, we'll get on to how powerful imagination is and how these stories that we create in our minds, which are not real, just because we thought about it, it becomes truth. And I always say that a lot of our thoughts, if they're not empowering, hashtag fake news. Don't don't listen to them. Don't listen to that chatter. But we'll get there. We'll 100% get there. So your brain has a negative bias. That has a positive intention. That's that, It has a positive intention, even though it's doing something negative. So we've all got trauma. Everybody's got trauma. Everyone has uh, negative things that's happened to them. I will keep it simple. If something bad happened to you when you were a kid, whatever that might be, it will have caused pain. And your brain doesn't like pain because that's fear of death. And your brain is supposed to, and, and there to keep you alive. So, for an example, when you were a kid, if you put your hand into a fire... You then cause yourself pain. Pain, signal, brain. Remember that you don't want to put your hand in a fire. That's it. Something that simple now becomes a memory. Now, that's actual things that are happening. What if something that you think has happened creating a false memory now, your subconscious has no judgment. It doesn't know the difference between actual causing yourself pain and thinking about pain. So if you start thinking, well, this this hurt, this or oh, this hurt, your subconscious doesn't know. It says, oh, I'll take that memory. I'll lock that. That's, that's one of those false memories that we, we can create. So this is why we have negative thoughts, because a lot of our memories come from negativity. So if you start playing those 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 movies back in our minds, of everything that went wrong and has hurt you in the past or you believed hurt you, we keep replaying that, but we we start cancelling out the positive because your brain is not wired to remember the positive things that happen into your life because there's no fear of hurting you. Imagine that. 
this powerful brain of yours is not wired to remember the good things that happen to your life. You have to consciously make an effort to think about the good times. And that's a really cool thing to do. And that is, and I mean that, it's a really cool thing to do. It takes effort. It does take effort. And I, and I hold up to that one. And what we often find, and this might be one of those the, those finishing moments, is, is at what point do we think the pain of where I am, because that's where I got to, the pain of where I was, and it was pain, it was that feeling in the pit of my stomach, absolute misery, self-loathing, hate, just those conversations that we, we create in our minds that we hide away from everybody of being absolutely useless, not good enough, and it's 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 scary. Our imaginations and our thoughts are some of the scariest things if we don't know how to manage that and understand that. And and that's something that I've, I've learned uh, over the years. And that's the reason I became a life coach, because we have these opportunities to be able to spread the good word and help as many people. And I think you'll find that most life coaches come from a place of, I've been there, I now have the tools to be able to get you, follow me, hold my hand, come with me, and I'll get you out of it. But that you have to be the one that's, ah, I need help on this one. And we don't as men. We don't, because that, then there's a, there's, a, there's a point of failure there. And, and it's, again, I didn't want to ask help. It wasn't, if it wasn't for my wife at that, that point, I don't know why I'm saying my wife at that point. She's still my wife. <laughs> I'm pointing. Uh, she's not there. Um, so, yeah, that, that's, that's exactly where we go. So that's why when, when we, I got speaking to Russ, it was negative thinking. Negative thinking. So let's just go in with negative thinking and why an elastic band uh, works. And the elastic band makes you conscious about your thoughts. The problem or the challenge that you have with your negative thoughts is they are automatic. Automatic negative thoughts. Imagine that. We call them ants. Automatic, uh, automatic negative thoughts. Elastic band. You actually have the power to stop. Repeat that again. Stop your negative thoughts if you want to make you... Now, it's exhausting. When you first do anything, it's like when you start going on. Because the, the, the challenge that we have with thinking and thoughts is and overthinking is it's, it's a habit that we've got ourselves into. It's a habit. So we started creating these thought loops and our brain starts working on those uh, thought loops and stuff like that. So that's what we have to do. We have to break the patterns that we have to. And when you start breaking patterns and you start breaking the way that you think, um, it, it can cause that cognitive dissonance within yourself. And you're not going to like how it makes you feel because once you get down into that constant stress and that it, it, we create a new comfort zone, your body becomes adjusted and acclimatized to this constant stress and pressure that you're putting under yourself. So once we start decreasing that, that, that thought, that, uh, your thoughts and creating a more positive then your body can start feeling different. So that's what cognitive dissonance is, which is why when we start doing something different, we fall back into old patterns because we don't like how it makes us feel because we forget that we've got so used to always feeling like this in this tension because of these negative thoughts, that becomes your new norm. That's the tension that you have. So we, we flip that. We give you a remote control. Huge, powerful thing. Uh, an elastic band. I, I do have my little uh, bands. It's always on me because that puts me back in control. And once you're back in control, you start feeling a lot healthier uh, with life. And I know Ross swears by his elastic band. Uh, Russ, sorry. Uh, so Russ always reaches out and says, I'm still wearing the band. I'm still wearing the band. So hopefully that's one thing that will, that will absolutely help you. If you take nothing else away from this radio uh, chat is understanding that an elastic band can start creating and empowering you to have better thoughts. Now, what I also wanted to talk about today was the different kind of thinking styles that everybody has that can cause us anxiety, uh, stress, overwhelm, emotional outbursts, and it's called thinky bingo. Thinky bingo. Imagine that. Thinky bingo. <laughs> The reason I laugh is because whenever I uh, say bingo, I just think of 1982, uh, Butlins, or End of the Pier in Blackpool. Bingo. So thinky bingo. Now you can get this. You can get this from the website. There's there's a there's a there's a thing there uh, that you can download. It's a lovely color, which is your bingo card. It's your actual bingo card. And that's when I spoke to Russ about doing the show. I said to Russ, um, "What can I do? Said, do whatever you want. 
do whatever you want that you think is going to create that possibility for someone to say, ah, I do that. Because self-awareness is is that key that I'm, I, I love to give everybody. Uh, in case you don't want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, self-awareness is, is something that is such a blissful thing because you're like, once you can recognize what you're doing, you've then got an ability to change the way that you think. Because our thoughts are automatic and normal. So picture this, you've got a bingo card. Picture this, you've got a bingo card. If you're watching this, wherever you are, uh, if you're driving uh, and you're just listening to this, uh, don't do this. But let's play a mental thinky bingo. All right, so you've got a bingo card in front of you, and I've got some bingo style uh, thinking styles for you. Some actual thinking styles of the way that you think that could be causing us anxiety, could be causing us depression, could be causing us uh, any kind of uh, uncomfort, just uncomfortable experiences miserableness, grumpiness in our lives. So thinky bingo. I'm going to talk about those things, uh, thinking styles. And I'm laughing because every time I've done this live with people, I, I always get everybody, to, and I've done this on Zoom, and I've done this on Zoom, and I've done it with loads of people. And whenever I do this, I, everybody's like... <laughs> Can you imagine? Guilty. Guilty, Your Honor. So these are these thinking styles that we have, right? These thinking styles. So I thought if you could walk away from this episode, uh, maybe it could help with that chatter about the chatter is the thinking styles. So polarized thinking. Think of a style of polarized thinking. Now, have you ever, we should maybe call this game, have you ever thinking? Every time you've done something like this, take a drink. Uh, a lot of you might be drunk by uh, the fourth style of, of, of thinking. You might actually be drunk by the fourth style. So we'll just keep it. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you've ever done these styles of thinking. So polarized thinking. Thinking, I'm going to all in. Everything's all in. And if I if I if I do it brilliant, or if I if I if I fail, I say I'm a failure. I'm a complete failure. Polarized thinking, all or nothing. I'm either all in, or I'm a failure. I'm all in, or I'm a failure. That's also works on if you're not perfect, then you're a complete failure. Oh well, I'm not perfect because everything's got to be perfect. And if I'm not perfect, I'm a failure. I'm useless. I'm absolutely nothing. Oh, yeah, thank you very much. It's so simple and effective. And that's what I want to do with this radio show is just make it so simple, so so effective that you can walk away with absolutely something uh, uh, really helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, and Rachel, hi, Rachel. Hi, Wave. How are you? Brilliant. I see the comments coming in. Good stuff. Hey, Rachel, how you doing? So uh, you raised your hand. You raised your hand for all or nothing thinking. Of course you did. Perfect. If you can raise your hand in the chat, that will be brilliant. That's one shake. Hi, Rachel. Okay, so all or nothing thinking, such as if I file, I'm a complete failure. That's one style of thinking. Another style of thinking. What about mental filtering? Only focusing on the negative. Negative details are magnified. Don't forget your brain's got, your brain has a negative bias. It's, it's wired to look on, on the negative. So do you ever find yourself really going for, well, if you were looking at a picture, if you're, <laughs> Andres, uh, you're looking at a picture, uh, you dwell on something so minor, you can't see this beautiful thing. So if you're looking at the Mona Lisa and you see a speck of dust and you're looking at the dust thinking, oh, that, that dust has just ruined it for me. That is mental filtering, only focusing on the negative. You can't see this beautiful picture of Mona Lisa because you're looking at this speck of dust. Can you imagine that style of thinking? That will absolutely cause you so much upset, absolute Take you on a spiral, downward spirals. So that's one of them. That's two styles of thinking already. Now, what we also can do on the flip first of that is always focusing on the positives. So you absolutely completely disqualify the negative and you don't ever want to see that. No, I'm perfect. I don't need to do anything else. So if you are always airing towards the positive. Now, for all our listeners, what a surprise. Cuddy Cudworth does have... The ability to only focus. I don't want to look at the negative. I'm only going to focus on the positive. Um, and that's, that's, I want to talk about that. A quick tip for that is, um, is managing expectations. Managing expectations. If you find yourself, you are too positive, your expectations are going to be too high. 
And when your hands are, when you're, when, when it's too high, your expectations are too high, you're going to constantly feel let down. That's something that absolutely 100% annoyed the hell out of me. And I had to change my expectations for gratitude. I had to change my expectations for gratitude. And in, in future shows, we'll talk about the, the power of gratitude. And I mean serious gratitude of when there's nothing around you to support you, having to look for one thing, two, three, three things that you can actually be grateful for. Even when something goes wrong, really do take on that. I'm grateful for this experience. If I'm grateful for this experience, as horrible it is, I know I'm going to learn and grow and be stronger. So it's a phenomenal. It's the power of gratitude. And I mean that sincerely. So uh, labeling. Let's talk labeling. And this is where chatter about the chat. Sorry, it's that side. Chatter about the chatter comes from assigning bad words to yourself. Assigning bad words to your <laughs> two hands up for her. So labeling. If you label yourself with this internal chatter, I'm stupid. I'm a loser. I'm useless. How is that going to make you feel? Be honest. Realistically. How are you? How is that going to make you feel? It made me feel absolutely a disgusting person. I just couldn't. I just. I was like, oh my god, because of something that absolutely had this matic. It was horrible. So, if you label yourself, and this is the so, this is so important, and I really want to maybe deep dive this a little bit more for absolutely everybody, as we're playing Thinky Bingo. <laughs> Thinky Bingo. Uh, I love it. It's gonna it's gonna be the newest uh, ITV show. Thinky Bingo. How's your thinking today, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> should I be making myself laugh that much? I'm not 100 sure I should. All right. So here we go. Um, that's that self-talk. That's that little monkey that pops up. And if you remember the cartoons years ago where you've got the good the good voice and the, the, the dark voice, and you've always got the dark voice, it's always going to be there. We've all got the, the, this dark side, and we, we shouldn't be afraid of it. We should understand it and know that we it's not it doesn't have to be real. We're the ones that give it the power. So assigning bad words to yourself. I'm stupid. I'm a loser. I'm useless. When you say that, do you genuinely think that's going to make you feel any better? We have to be careful. That's the, the power of the linguistics that we speak on a daily basis. The power of linguistics that we speak on a daily basis is you are coding yourself. You are coding the way that you think. You're coding the brain to feel. So if you say, I'm stupid, imagine your brain is a Rolodex. It's going to go through the roll of the filing cabinet. It's the filing cabinet. It's going to go through and say, I'm stupid. So if you say I'm stupid or I'm a loser, it goes back. You've coded. You've sent that message. I'm going to go back to the last time I felt stupid. Oh, that's the emotion. I'm going to give you that emotion. There's your emotion. So you should never say you're stupid. Say I can do better. I would like to learn more. Right. I'm a loser. How did it feel last time I was in a uh, Oh, that's the emotion. Depression. Let's give you that. All right. And that's our power. That's within our power. Is really upgrading that self-talk. That's a massive thing. And that's what chatter about the chatter is, is, is all about, is upgrading that self-talk. Um, and if, you, if, you, if you're listening to this, listen. One of the, the beautiful things that you can ever do is listen how people talk about themselves. And you will see how they start thinking about themselves. It's the words that they use. All right. That's, that's a massive thing. And I hope genuinely that, that helps for everyone. So remember, when you say something, or if you use the statement, oh, I am an ass," or I am tired, You've, you've spelled it. You've literally sent a message up to your brain. All right, last time you felt tired, this is how you felt. So those I am statements are a massive thing in, in everyone's life. Gentlemen's life, ladies' life. Those I am statements can absolutely make or break your day. It's such an such a important part. So overgeneralization. A style of thinking, overgeneralization, is focusing on one negative event and then just guessing that all the negative events all the other events will be the same. So imagine if you fell off the horse on your first try, you're never going to try again because you're going to think, I've just fallen off the horse. It's going to happen again. Give me a hand up, raise up. If you're an overgeneralization, you're ticking the boxes. <laughs> so that's self-awareness. Self-awareness. Brilliant. We can find ourselves, oh, this happened once, it's going to happen again. And that's a really uh, detrimental way of thinking because that can stop us trying things, that can stop us doing things. So that's that's a really clever way. Veronica, thank you so much, Dominica. Honestly, it's, it's, it's very common. It's so common, but we don't have to live like that. That's one of those things 
especially if you if you ever join us in the monkey mind there's a facebook group you can join um and you can talk to me live in there and things like that we we talk about upgrading that self-talk and there's, there's such a powerful thing uh there for you to, to use and stuff like that so uh blaming others for how we feel i i'm i'm older my i used to do this i used to do this blaming others for how we feel so i used to be the person i used to blame 100 people around me for how i felt and i would say it's not me it's not me these 100 people around me if i just change them i'll be all right <laughs> imagine the exhaustion that i would have trying to change those 100 people so i would feel all right and that that's that that was such a silly rule uh, that I made for myself, and we, you have to stop these rules. And obviously, it's not easy when we go through these changes. And I, I'm talking about I've worked with people with massive trauma in their life as well, and 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 come from these stories, and um, what PTSD and, and and trauma, and how we can change it just by changing his mindset and the way that we think. It's it's a it's a fun, phenomenal journey that we go on and, and things like that. Once we start saying, I think that's the person I'm going to need to to work with to get past these things. Brilliant. So jump into conclusions. Oh no, blaming others for how we feel. It, it, it creates, it's a lack of responsibility on our emotions. And I always, I, always, I always remind everyone, I remind myself, my emotions are mine and I'm in control of those emotions. They are mine and I'm in control of those. If I blame somebody else for how I feel, I've lost that little bit of control that I can have because we can't have a lot of control sometimes. So I'm in charge of that. That is my power. Uh, and hopefully that'll help anybody that, that's reading, uh, listening to this as well. So blaming others for how we feel. Oh no, I'm fine. It's just that person's just done this, and then, oh, and it's it's exhausting. It creates depression. It creates uh, more anxiety uh, that we have. Also, language that we use. I should have. I could have. Or I would have. How frustrating are those words? Thumbs up from Rachel Sam. Veronica's there as well. Yes. I mean, you see now, Veronica. I want to mention that, you know, when are you using, you see, you've started creating, if you say I'm usually to blame, that's another one of, of, let me, uh, that's the blaming. You blame others for your pain or you blame yourself for everything. So, uh, and we can touch on that. Let's touch on that as quickly as we can, uh, Veronica. You are not responsible for everything. You are not, no, Veronica, you're not usually the one to blame. We start creating these thought loops of, oh, it's my fault. Everything's my fault. And that creates that 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 mindset that everything that I do has a catastrophic event. We're going to talk about catastrophizing as well. So, no, it's not always about that. Uh, so, no, it's not always you. And we have to get out of that mindset of how, how genuinely important we are and, and everything's around us. That creates that mindset of, well, I can't do anything because I'm to blame for everything. So we don't want to go down that route for Veronica either. That's, that's a, thank you very much for being honest on that one. All right, mental filter, uh, filtering, disqualifying the positive. We find evidence to always see the negative. We can absolutely disqualify any positives. We can disqualify policy. I've definitely taken the point from earlier show, so thank you. Oh, no, good stuff. Brilliant, Veronica. Good stuff. Uh, Overgeneralization. Another thinking style that we have is an overgeneralization. Everything always goes wrong. Nothing good ever happens to me thinking. Have you done that? Everything always goes wrong. Nothing ever good happens to me. That's 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 one of those thinking styles. We start creating a belief of we are that unlucky or we are that that everything goes wrong for us. So we don't even start looking for actually today wasn't as bad a day as possible. So um, that's that's one of those styles of thinking that we can ha ah, so many times. Rachel, yeah, it's not true. That's the thing. A lot of our beliefs are not true. They're really not true in any way whatsoever. So uh, mind reading. The, the this this amazing mind reading thinking style of how we can mind read what everyone else is thinking about us so thinking and predicting what others are thinking assumptions have you finished other people's sentences for them <laughs> mind reader i know what you're thinking no you don't no we don't we don't know what anyone else is thinking we only know what we're thinking and we can project what we're thinking onto others and everyone's like no i wasn't really thinking that I wasn't thinking that at all. So look, these are these thinking styles. Uh, and once we've gone through it all, a lot of people say, I've got a full house on the bingo. I've got a full house on the bingo. So if you change the way that you think, and I mean that, change the way that you think, you will feel better. You will become happier. 
you will pick up because it's that ever it's that never ending cycle of, of this film and we'll, we'll discuss this as well i've just realized i've only got 15 minutes left i can't believe i've really been talking now so predicting fortune telling do you ever find yourself predicting a bad ending with no proof or evidence oh it's going to go wrong because we've already got the earlier thinking of everything goes wrong so why should i try because last time i tried so it's these over generalizations of the way that we think personalization thinking everything is personal and all topics are about you are you talking about me when you're walking down the street, do you kind of think, oh, they must be thinking bad things about me? That's a personalization. You're making, we, we start making ourselves the most important. We, we create the mindset of we're the biggest movie star in our own world and everybody must be looking at us. So that personalization, the way that we think, ah, so many times, brilliant. That personalization, and that one thing, if I can pass that on to absolutely anybody, is... No one's thinking about you because they're too busy. Guess what? Thinking about themselves. Thinking about themselves. Catastrophizing, over-exaggeration, the truth. Uh, and this is where your imagination comes in. This is where your imagination comes in. So catastrophizing. Catastrophizing and over-exaggeration of the truth, uh, truth, increasing the worry and jumping to worst-case scenarios. Black and white thinking, only seeing one way to do it. Not seeing other people's opinions. There's only one thing that we can be done. It can't be done any other way. And the minim minimization. Minimizing um, positive experiences, not seeing any positives. I mean, these are the thinking styles that we can have that can cause our anxiety, depression, stress. So how do we do that? Self-awareness. Go to the website, download that, put it in. And set yourself that challenge to, I'm not going to do one style of thinking. You will get overwhelmed if you think I'm going to do for the whole week. I am not going to do all of these thinkings. Not possible. Not possible because um, it's too much. Hey, Dave, how are you doing? Three thumbs up for Dave. Three thumbs up means you've probably done it. Whichever one of those thinkings. So, Dave, pleased to meet you. Welcome to the show, Dave. Welcome to the show. I'm Cuddy Cudworth, uh, the host of Chatter About the Chatter at Men's Radio Station. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for, for watching. So uh, go to the website, download that, um, and put it up on your fridge. I say fridge, put it somewhere uh, in your house where you're going to see quite a lot. Obviously, for me, it's the fridge. <laughs> Again, I probably shouldn't laugh so much at this, if I'm honest. Uh, yeah, so uh, put it up and then just say, right, today, get yourself an elastic band, or got the website and, and, and get one of the bands, snap it every time you start polarized thinking or catastrophizing. Catastrophizing is really bad. It's a, it's a, it's a really bad uh, way of, of thinking. It's it's jumping to worst case scenario all the time. It, it, it's, it's this constant way of thinking that absolutely destroys your mental health. And I mean that sincerely. Um, and that sh could be one of those ways that, that massively helps you uh, and gets you back to, to where you are, back into an even kill of normal cognitive thinking, because that comes from cognitive behavioral therapy, which I do uh, with my clients and things like that. So, yeah, uh, global labeling, an extreme form of generalization, uh, which just it, it kind of creates that mindset of everything, the whole world's against me and things like that. Always being right. Now, your monkey mind. This is a, this is a really bad way of thinking. Monkey mind, your monkey mind likes to be right it's this big insecure emotional part of us that we have that says i like to be right so give us a hands up if you're one of those people that likes to be right all the time your monkey mind holds on to the because it's such an insecure it's an emotional part of our mindset and the brain and the mind is uh if you don't hold if you are wrong then that just absolutely can uh, shout you no i've got to be right i've got to be right now, if it's not you, maybe you know somebody. No, I've got to be right. I'm right. Everyone else is wrong. And one of those great questions, and I'll, I'll probably repeat this, and I do repeat this to a lot of people, is would you rather be right? Oh, hey, Rachel, how you doing? There we go. Rachel's got a hand up for that one. Would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? And I think that was an Oprah Winfrey quote. I'm sure I saw that from Oprah Winfrey. I certainly can't steal that quote. I'm always right until my wife says I'm wrong. Fair play. Fair play. <laughs> and Domenico, how often does that happen? 
We have to be humble in these situations. We do have to be humble. But I can guarantee you now, one of the things that I that I had to work on is, um, and I know we've, we've got 11 minutes left. Um, I, I This has gone so quick. <laughs> I had pages and pages of things that we're going to talk about. So, always wanting to be right comes from an insecurity within us and, and thinking if we're wrong, then we're not going to look like this old and powerful person. Honestly, it's one of the worst things. That's what the monkey mind attaches to. It holds on to. Um, and you might know people that always want to be right. Let them be right. You can't argue with... with. I did make a post in the Facebook group. Uh, you can't you, you can't argue with donkeys. Um, and I'm not saying that any of your friends are donkeys or anything like that, but there's a really good post about a... Uh, a, a a, a jaguar or a tiger arguing with a donkey because the donkey says the grass is green, uh, blue. Donkey says the grass is blue. And the, uh, the the tiger says, no, it's not, it's green. No, no, the grass is blue. Actually, go to the I don't want to ruin the story because it's a phenomenal story because you have to ask yourself, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Because they're not always mutually exclusive and that's, that's sometimes. So how do we create a positive mindset? We manage expectations. Donkey Dom. Or oh, don't start. No, you're labeling yourself there, Dom, uh, Dom, uh, Domenico. Don't label yourself. <laughs> Absolutely do not label yourself. Um, you, we have to learn how to upgrade uh, that self-talk because it's 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 a very old saying. It's it's the spelling. It's called spelling once you, once you create a... And a lot of our beliefs and limiting beliefs actually don't even come from us. It might have come from your friends. You, you, you might have had friends or family that said, oh, well, you can't do this and we can't do this and we can't do that. And that just automatically becomes our belief of what we can and can't do. And that gets so entangled in these thought processes that are going on that it can it can 100% mess with your mental health. And I, I'm, I'm talking to all the ladies and the gentlemen in here. Um, it, it's There's so many things we can do. But we, we create a story of we can't do that. It can't be that easy. Now, talking to somebody is one of the th those things that you absolutely should do. You should reach out to someone. Self-limiting beliefs are always overcome by self-awareness. Best wishes from all of us at APA. Oh, very nice. Dave Sleet. Thank you very much. And look, the next session we can look. The next session we're going to be coming back up in, in in a couple of weeks' time. We're going to do another one, and we can talk about those limiting beliefs and where we get those limiting beliefs from. But your brain is a computer. If your self-talk, that internal self-talk is negative and you think you can't have anything else going on in your life and we can't turn it off, meditation does work. Talking to somebody does work because you can also find out Oh, that's actually a normal way of thinking. That's like, Those thoughts are actually not that bad. They're quite a common thing for everybody because our thoughts become so scary in our lives, um, it, it can just absolutely decimate us. And, I, and I, I mean that to absolutely everyone. You don't have to carry on going like that. So this was not a problem, Domenico. Again, this posit I think I read something recently about toxic positivity, about people who are just constantly positive, constantly positive, constantly positive. No, you can't have a negative thought. You can't have a negative thought. That's That's... I wouldn't really say that was toxic positivity. I would say that's a little bit deluded, to be honest with you. I don't think you can be that positive on, on a daily basis. You, we have to accept that there's going to be some days the monkey mind is going to 100% take a hold of us and absolutely go mental. Uh, mental is probably not the best word to use, but absolutely just go really loud, really, really loud. And the tools and tips that we can take away from meditation, talking to people, whether it's... Uh, therapy or whether it's life coaches, uh, whoever you want to talk to will absolutely get you where you need to be. Don't be scared of your thoughts. Hashtag fake news. If that thought that you have is not, and I repeat, not enhancing your day, um, it's not worthy of your attention. It's not worthy of your attention. And to anybody out there that says, oh, but my, my thoughts are so much worse than yours or that person's, they're not. They're not. And we need to create this area where we can talk about those negative thoughts and listening to somebody else who, who can can verbalize what you're thinking can also be such a helpful benefit. Veronica said, you have a great way of helping people to understand our capability. Oh, yeah, not a problem. Oh, Veronica, thank you so much. Um, and trust me, my monkey mind was absolutely running wild before doing the show. I was doing all my breathing exercises 
uh, and this was me very, <laughs> was this me very erratic? I wouldn't say erratic, but I was, I did speak to Russ before the show started. I said, Russ, do I actually just literally have to speak for, for an hour? He went, yep, that's literally what you have to do. Really? So I will say thank you very much to all the comments to the side. And I hope that you had some benefit from this chat. You can absolutely go to uh, Monkey Mind. I don't know. It's because it's done. No, you can go to monkeymindrelaxation.com. Find out more about me, uh, Cuddy Cudworth, uh, what we do and what the services that we offer. Um, and we run positive mindset courses uh, that help people. In fact, I'm just doing a positive mindset course with about 20 people right now uh, from India, from Canada, from America. It's actually an international uh, a program that we run. Uh, so it's pretty well. There's going to be one coming up later in September. Uh, if you want to learn any, any more about uh, how you can really change your mindset. Mindset is such a powerful thing. Um, and, and, and if you've got a strong mindset, you, you can create differences and changes within your life um and it's a massive massive thing and coming from a place that whatever's happened in the past is in the past and we can move forward we just we hold on to these insecurities and we hold on to these absolute vile thoughts sometimes of, of we're not worthy and we're not good enough because somebody may have told you when you were growing oh you can't do that or you're, you're stupid and that that word just goes in and then it starts becoming our beliefs and our identity and once it becomes your identity, it starts becoming who you are. And, and we can break those identities by, oh, thank you. Not a problem. Thank you for being part of the MRO. Oh, thank you so much. No, uh, much appreciated. Um, I can't believe how quick the time's gone. It's it's an hour. I want to do another two hours on this. <laughs> so we're going to do some more shows. Uh, Russ, Russ has approved that. And uh, we're going to get some people to come on and talk and, and, and get the message out. Um, to all the ladies and the gentlemen that are listening to the show at Men's Radio Station. Um, just, I, I've got four minutes left to speak. <laughs> I'm just so happy that it just went so well. Uh, Rachel Sam. Oh, thank you so much, Rachel. I, I will. And look, join the Facebook group. If you go to monkeymindrelaxation.com, you'll see my uh, uh, generally average face uh, down there. Um, and you can join the Facebook group. There's a Facebook group, monkeymindrelaxation.com. Um, you can work with me one on one personally if you wish. Um, and there's some podcasts on, available on Spotify where I talk to other guests uh, ab about that internal chatter. I've, I've talked to some fabulous ladies as well um, about everything that, 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 that's gone on in their life and how they've overcome those challenges. And that chatter, that chatter, if it's not positive, if you are not sowing positive seeds, and I'm talking about when you've made a mistake in your life or you've, if you are not sowing positive seeds in there, they grow into absolutely monsters of self-hatred, self-loathing, and trust me, I've been there. That That's one of the biggest things that I will, will tell everyone. I've been exactly where you are and you don't have to stay there. If you're willing to, it's that pain there's going to be pain. And the brain doesn't like pain, so it keeps us frozen. It keeps us frozen where we are because we don't want to make that change um, because we get we create a comfort zone that's not comfy, that's not comfy in any way. Uh, and, and there's that pain of, do I stay where I am, which is absolute miserable, or do I move forward? Because no one's coming to save you. And I, I mean that sincerely. You have to do it yourself. You've got to do the work. It's all right. You'll have friends that say, oh, try this and try this and try this. And it, it doesn't, it's um, until you're ready. And a, a lot of people might be reading, uh, listening to this and they might be saying, oh, who's this idiot talking? No, nope. sometimes we're just not ready to hear the truth. Sometimes I wasn't ready to hear the truth, but it was the best thing that I ever had was I had to do something. Um, I had to do something. I had to do something about it. It went so quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll be back for this brand new series of chatter about the chatter. It's honestly, ladies and gentlemen, I, I come from a place of, uh, of absolute experience. And I it's one of those hard things uh, because when I see I see it. I see it all around me. I see it with my own. Uh, we're close to people in my life. And, and I come from an understanding of, ah, oh, I just wish they'd do this, this, or this. But you can't help people that don't want help. And that's why I got this beautiful platform. So hopefully we can we can help the world. That's that's what we do. I come from a place of love. 
Uh, a love for myself and love for everyone around. Uh, and I have generally got uh, 25 seconds left. So I hope you enjoyed uh, Cuddy Cudwa's chatter about the chatter at Men's Radio Station. Uh, thank you, Veronica. Much appreciated. Uh, I What you see with me is pretty much what you'll find. Happy, jolly, um, six foot two, three feet wide. Big love from Cuddy, everybody. I'll see you on the next show of Chatter About the Chatter.